Furiosa and Mad Max Saga I have found quite entertaining. Now granted, I wouldn't put this over Fury Road, but overall I had a fun time with this movie. And if you're a fan of the Mad Max franchise, definitely check it out because it is well worth the effort. Going into this one, I had high expectations because I am a huge fan of this franchise. George Miller knows how to direct these movies. So basically, this is a prequel film taking place before the events of Mad Max Fury Road. And Furiosa's backstory was well told within this one. The acting, the character development, the plot, the music, the action scenes, all of it comes together to make quite a compelling journey. Still, there are some bumps in the road such as the long run time. With this being 148 minutes, then some of the scenes went on longer than they really needed to be. And I get that this film had to cover 15 years, but I really feel a short run time probably would have done this film better in my opinion. Plus, while the music is good, it's not as iconic compared to the music from Fury Road, so that's another thing I had noticed when I was watching this. Nonetheless though, my complaints about this movie are minor, and for the most part, it's just a fun thrill ride from beginning to end. Man, I have to say, I had enjoyed the acting for everybody in this film, particularly Anna Love Brown, hopefully I'm saying that right, but she plays Young Furiosa because Anna Taylor Joy doesn't show about the 45 minute mark, and you know, I could totally buy that this young girl would end up becoming the Furiosa that we know about in Fury Road. And I'll tell Joy, her acting was great as well. Now granted, she doesn't have that many lines. In fact, I think she has less lines than Max did in Fury Road. I like how Furiosa came off as quiet, but she wasn't a weak character either. But particularly, I have to give praise to Chris Hemsworth. His acting was amazing. The Mentress was the type of character that you just hate to see because he does some pretty messed up stuff here. And, you know, I actually had concerns about Chris Hemsworth. I was thinking he was going ham it up because some of the trailer showed that. And I was like, oh, man, I'm hoping that doesn't happen. I'm glad that that's not the case here. But particularly, while this film is interesting, it's not as great as it could have been. Yeah, the action scenes are cool. Yeah, the CGI looks badass, even though some of the green screen looks kind of obvious. But, you know, I want to say this is a bad movie. Far from it. It's probably one of the better movies that came out this month. And if anything, I wonder if they think about making another Furiosa film taking place after the events of Fury Road. I think that would be cool to see because to see her adventures continue, that would be quite something to say at least. But quite frankly, I think that this film, it is well worth the time of fans and non-fans alike. Particularly if you grew up watching this franchise, you're going to have a fun time. And even if you don't know anything about the Furiosa character, you don't need to have seen Fury Roll in order to really understand this because this one right here, yeah, it's entertaining, but at the same time, it doesn't get boring either. I'm giving this film an 8 out of 10. Even nearly a decade later since the last installment, George Miller still provides us with quality entertainment. But at the same time, I'm questioning, was this movie really necessary because did we really need to see how Furiosa became a badass? I always thought that was the mystique of the character, not knowing about her origin story. As far as origin stories go though, this was well done and I am looking forward to what they do with this franchise next. And that's my review of Furiosa and Mad Max Saga. Alright, leave your comments down below in the section and let me know what you think about this movie if you have seen it. Okay, this is Slum Guy 172 saying peace out.